forward to sharing the knowledge and the excitement that's getting ready to happen, not only in Tampa Bay, but just all across the world. Because we all are stuck, especially we about to get shut down in a minute. So these folks that we got here today are the ones you want to really talk about talk to all right but before we get into that let me share with you a little bit about what's going on in the world of sports and entertainment first and foremost got to give a big shout out to my, my my partner in crime my brother jimmy mack from union square shoes he got a pre-sale going on the shoes are fire go check it out but uh, let's start off with uh you know in honor of bruce sweden the engineer that did Beat It, that did Thriller, that's worked with Michael Jackson and mixing all his records. Uh, he recently passed away. As a matter of fact, he lived right up the block in Ocala, Florida. And uh, he was 86 years old. So all of my producer friends have been acknowledging him. And, and uh, you know, we lost the giant in the, in the engineering music world. Also... Speaking of producers, got to give a big shout out to Mr. Salam Remy. This is the guy that brought the Fugees, worked with Amy Winehouse, Nas, uh, had his own group, had his own record label. He just came out with a new album. The album is fire. Uh, it's it, I call it the the best way to describe it is 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 that is that is that smooth hip hop soul type album so it's called black on purpose uh the the album is is predicated based off of what's been going on with black lives matter and and some of the losses we had and so he's definitely put out an album with some hit makers black thought busta rhymes uh some jamaican artists super cat etc etc so go check that out also Mr. Barack Obama, our former president, just came out with a book. It's on audio book. It's also on regular books. So go, go ahead and buy that. And I got to give a big shout out. This is a this is a group that's, you know, that's that's up and coming. You know, I'm a New York guy, so you got to re- I got to represent for my Harlem cats. You know, Big L is my guy, and these guys for are from 135th. And this is the Lennox Avenue spit. Uh, this is a uh, Herb McGruff. And uh, what is my man's name? They call We The Zone. We The Zone. So they gruff and spit. And they're coming out soon. They got a bidding war with several record labels. So that's going to be very interesting. Go check them out. IG on Lennox Avenue SPIT. In the sports world, everybody's talking about the Houston Rockets blowing up. Boom! I mean, you know, you got James Harden talking about he won a trade. Well, first of all, Westbrook is like, I'm out. Get me out of here. So now everybody's fighting for Westbrook. Uh, Then you got James Harden saying, listen, I'm out. And he's talking about he might come to my Brooklyn Nets, baby. (laughs) Woo! That is going to be crazy if he goes to the Brooklyn Nets. So I can't wait for that. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, Oh, and Megan Thee Stallion is coming out with her album this Friday on midnight. So it's on fire. But speaking of things that are coming out, I would say about maybe a week ago or two weeks ago, they're estimating from what I'm looking at in my research, almost a million PS5 units have been sold already. That's what they're estimating. That's a, that's a lot of money, especially when you're talking about at least what... what I, I couldn't even tell you because I'm not even into gaming like that, but I love the culture. And that's why I got these guys on the, on, on the line with us today because as I grew up in the hip-hop culture, hip-hop culture grew from, you know what, we're bored, let's do something, but let's not be on a negative let's be on the positive and that's why we had b-boy dancing and they were battling we had djs making people muse I mean, making music but they were battling djs they were battling in rapping being an mc and all of a sudden it has become this huge culture 
hip hop is the longest reigning music culture that there is, surpassing rock and roll. But guess what? There's other cultures going on. I've also been involved. That's why I talk about my partner, Jimmy Mack. His Union Square shoes revolves around the action sports culture, the BMX. I was hanging around with go with the, the X game guys doing the crazy stuff with the flipping of the bikes and the half pikes with the skateboards, that culture, they are family. They're within themselves and they do their thing. This next culture right here, this gaming culture is bananas. Why? Because when I was in college at NYU, we played Madden, but we sucked. <laughs> right? But I'm going to tell you something. The folks that I got on the line today, Mr. Mr. Man, let me just introduce this guy, man, because before I before I go into all that, let me let me go into a little bit about this man's bio because this is a true millennial right here. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait. Let me start off with at the age of probably around 15, him and his twin brother took a Texas instrument calculator, broke it, or oh, they didn't they didn't break it. They took it apart and then created their own video game while they was in the classroom learning trigonometry and they were just playing games. And then from there, they understood the magnitude. Of course, they were they loved Super Mario Brothers and all that good stuff. But guess what? They were one of the first folks to actually discover indie games. And I'm going to touch on a little bit about that because it's similar to, like I said, that Lennox Avenue spit. These guys are independent artists. This gentleman and his twin brother have founded many a independent video games before they got launched to the majors. And then that company was called Project MQ, and now he's doing big things. He's rep representing Tampa Bay, and he's working on some big things for the Super Bowl, which is coming into Tampa Bay. So welcome to the show, Mr. Marcus Howard. What's up? What's up, brother, man? Appreciate the uh, invitation, opportunity to be a part of this. It's It's been a crazy nine months, and even crazier next few months coming up to the Super Bowl. We got some big things planned. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're transitioning, and 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 before we we jump into that, I want to introduce. So so Marcus is millennial generation. I'm Generation X, but then we got Generation Z in the house. This gentleman right here, he's only 25 years old, and he's a freaking genius. I mean, this guy's been this guy loves his gaming. He's been breaking computers up himself creating stuff but what he does that's uniquely different is that he understands the back end of the gaming game what he does he helps create communities like a like a developer creates communities in florida developing houses and things of that nature. this guy creates twitch communities bananas so he knows the the gaming from that perspective from a cultural perspective and he's generation z so he's in the mix so let's welcome to the show, Mr. Andrew Kennedy in the house. What's up? Thank you. It's good to be here. Awesome, awesome. Look, see, look at that, look at that, look at that machine he got there glowing in the dark. You know he's a gamer. You know what I'm saying? And then last but not least, let's bring to the show, this guy is the Jedi. Let me tell you something about this guy right here. He was on a show before. He got a new podcast that you guys got to check out. It's called The Street Startup, baby, on YouTube. Gotta check it out. He's always focusing on going from the streets to the suites, baby. He's a world-renowned entrepreneur, also, as well as a teacher. He's not a coach. Everybody wants to be a coach. Nah, this guy's not only a teacher. He's, like he's a professor. This guy's been teaching entrepreneurship to kids for over 25 plus years, globally, Ireland, New Zealand, San Francisco. He's dealt with the who's who's from the Bill Gates Foundation to the Michael Milken Foundation to working with the Ivy Leagues and Stanford and Oxford. 
in teaching entrepreneurship so that folks can have choices. And there t- and today he's working with Andrew Can- Kennedy where they're going to discuss a project that they're working on. And that's why we bring him to the show of Power Moves where celebrities, athletes, key influential executives share how they make money. We're going to talk about this money. We're going to talk about how they earn their, I mean, to attract this power and how they earn respect. So let's set it off. Mr. Marcus Howard, what it do, baby, and how you making money, baby, in this esports? Because this is, they're saying by 2022, we're looking at $1.3 billion but we know this thing's going to go to a hundred and forty something billion dollar industry. Tell me about that. Where is that money coming from? It's crazy, man. It's it's the esports is is kind of the tip of the iceberg. It's it's one point five billion dollar industry now, but the larger piece of it, the gaming industry, it made just randomly an extra fifteen billion dollars this year. They had projected it to be a hundred and sixty billion dollar industry. It looks like it's going to clear one seventy five. So that's where the real money is, and, and what esports is trying to do is figure out how to be a part of the gaming industry to really take, uh, again, advantage of that bigger space, that bigger opportunity. All right. So, 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 so talk to me, talk to me about the overall gaming industry, like in terms of like, like you've been in the gaming industry for quite some time and you double dip it. You know, you're a father too. You got your regular day job, but then you putting it down on this gaming so 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 elaborate a little bit about how does one start making money in the in the gaming industry and, and then we're going to tap into andrew from his take so this is you coming from millennial mr papa you were got responsibilities how at your boy yeah man uh like 75 percent. most of the money that's in the esports space right now is in in media uh rights and sponsorships and then mm-hmm. a little bit, the other piece of it is merchandise, ticket sales, things of that nature. Uh, but but again, like most of the space right now is how do you get those those TV rights and and again those media sponsorships, what you see in those physical events. Okay, okay, okay. So so Andrew, can you touch on because you create these Twitch communities and things of that nature? How does that work? And 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 could you describe? the opportunity that you and CJ have in helping folks identify those revenue sources that Marcus just spoke about in terms of the, the sponsorships and these, these events and things of that nature on a virtual level. Absolutely. So as he mentioned, uh, sponsorships, merchandise, everything like that, you have to have a following or a community. So building the community up of people who are going to buy your products and then give you enough eyes to where sponsors are even interested in you are super important. Uh, And then really just reaching out and engaging with the community uh, that you're trying to build is tantamount to what you're trying to do. Uh, Me and CJ's um, endeavor here is just kind of helping people who have that talent or that spark whether it's in streaming or esports or not, just kind of realize the gains they have and kind of protect themselves as they try to build up a portfolio of what they do. Okay, okay. So, you know, I think what's interesting about what, you, what you're what you saying and to piggyback what Marcus is saying is community is everything when it comes down to, to, to really generating this revenue. Um, could you share with us, Andrew, how do you help folks like how do you, how does one build a community so that they can generate revenue? What's the economics behind that, basically? And maybe CJ, you could break it down from an economic standpoint. Uh, so, of course, you have to have that that little bit of spark, the little bit of uniqueness that makes you as a content creator. You're basically marketing yourself. So, if you just have that little bit, and then you're doing all the right things and engaging in the right ways and then being careful to not alienate any of your base. Um, Most of what I did in the communities that I've helped build is pretty much just be a hype man, constantly talk up whoever it was and just constantly eyes, attention and everything like that. Ah, cause I was getting, you know, I, I was getting ready to just say to you, okay, you start talking in generalities. You gotta hit me with specifics. I'm, you know, like I said, I'm Generation X. I don't want to know how to make this money. Like you saying, doing the right things. What is the right thing? <laughs> so, Marcus, what's the right thing, man? I'll tell you, the, the right thing right now is really uh, NFTs, right? It's part of that Bitcoin technology. 
non-fungible tokens. Uh, there's a company I advise called Game Credit. So the first crypto company uh, for gaming and esports created back in 2014. What they have allowed organizations, brands, influencers to do is to basically create their own digital art to represent their brand or their product or their, their community and then sell that virtual currency, those NFTs, that digital art out as a new revenue source. And so that, that's that's really kind of spearheading the space. Nobody even really knows about that because that, that platform just launched last week on Thursday. Oh, ooh, see, we getting the inside scoop. We getting the inside scoop over here. So, so CJ, man, how does that break down from an economic business perspective, bro? Yeah, here it goes, right? So, well, look, first off, you're asking for all these inside tips. I wouldn't be an entrepreneur if I didn't say, hey, look, if you want the inside scoop, come take our course. Check us out at OFBV.network, right? It's in there. Right? You want the inside tip? It's in there. Come check us out. <laughs> but listen, in all seriousness, what we're talking about here is really the basics of any business model, right? And what Andrew and I were able to identify is that gamers have what's called transferable skills. That the, the skills and talents that gamers have been building all these years playing these games transfer very well over to the world of entrepreneurship. There's one part that's being left out, and that's the business knowledge. So our value added, if you will, you say, what's the, what's the business models behind all this? If you're going to be in business, look, it's great to have your great idea, but you better be able to add value in the marketplace. And that's where some folks start to break down a little bit. So what we do is we take people and teach them and help them to take those transferable skills from gaming, combine that with the business knowledge, and be successful in the marketplace, frankly, at whatever endeavor they choose. So the business models, it's real simple. I just got out of a class an hour ago. It's revenue minus expenses equals your contribution margin. And if that math's not working for you, you're not going to be in business very long no matter how exciting you are. Mm, mm, okay, okay. So so Marcus talked about the NFTs, right? What are your thoughts about, you know, what you just said and how can, being that this is relatively new, how, do you, how does one measure the NFT? Because you've worked with venture capitalists, right? Mm -hmm. And so you know how to kind of help folks position themselves so that they can, if they're looking to go IPO or if they're looking to, uh, to, to get private equity money, whatever the case may be, with this new venture that's coming out, this new currency or ex exchange, can you explain how that can be uh, a game changer or, or, or provide some type of true business model? Yeah. So, and, and look, I'll let Marcus go to the, to the details on this. Cause I know he's an expert on this, even though it's a new industry, but let's break it down to the basic points that it would be for any industry, right? First thing you got to know your numbers and whatever business model you've got, you better know how you're generating cash, what your expenses are and what that net profit is. that's left over at the end. And then what's your market cap? Right. These are some key numbers that you've got to know before you start to walk in and talk to any investor, no matter what form of currency that they're going to use as as the investment tool. The second key thing I talk to folks about is you've got to know who you're playing with here. You know, I know ethics gets brushed off a lot as one of the soft subjects in the area of business. But no, you know. I've been at this long enough where I've had some successes and I got lucky working with people and investors. And I've had uh, times when I walked into the wrong room with the wrong people and I thought I was gonna get a great deal. And I, I walked out of there a lot worse for when I walked in. And it was all boiled down. I knew my numbers, I knew my math, I knew my business, but I hadn't checked people out or vetted them on the ethics side. Mm. So I think those are two big chunks and two easy tips that I could give people right now. Know your numbers and vet people on the ethics side. You know, Charles Smith, great basketball player, once said to me, he said, CJ, do business with people that you are evenly yoked with. And he was not wrong when he said that. Marcus, that's right, I'll that's turn right. it over to you. Go ahead, Marcus. Yeah, you just you have to learn more about the space. Again, uh, you may, not, may or may not have seen that PayPal just announced last week that you can now buy and pay for things in Bitcoin. 
So it's still kind of day one, right? The technology is 11 years old, uh, but it, it's, it's at right around, I think, $17,000 as of this week. And about four weeks ago, it was at 13000 So there's still plenty of time to get in. What I see in the space is NFTs will grow to represent communities. Joel, just like you were saying earlier, uh, Andrew, what he was saying earlier, it's, it's not necessarily how do you use the U.S. dollar to represent your community, but how do you create your own currency that represents your fandom, your brand loyalty, your community? And then how do you exchange that for things of value? So if you have merchandise, uh, you know, like Andrew was saying earlier, instead of selling it for cash, maybe you sell it for $20 in U.S. dollars, but in your currency, you sell it for, uh, you know, $10. Not to discount it, the value of it, but to, to pay the respect back to your community, right? Say, because you're a part of this community, here is a discount unique to you for being part of this team, part of this ecosystem. And that's really what esports teams need as they move forward. A is to build, like you said, the sense of community and loyalty, but really they need to figure out ways to create more revenue that scales and digital scales much more and more quickly than you know physical merchandise and live events. Mm. And Joel, one of the things so, I would, t one of, sorry, one of the things I would tell people is, look, this isn't a new concept. If you want to get in that game and you want to do it, there are some models out there that you can look at and learn from. For instance, there's people using local communities. I think that's huge what Mark has highlighted about the benefit to the communities. One of the things that gamers and entrepreneurs have in common is that sense of freedom and that desire to have control over their own destiny. And the one lock hold that society's had over us is currency, right? And mm -hmm. for, for gamers to be able to break through that barrier and have control over the currency and the means of exchange, that enhances the freedom of the industry. You know, um, and, and this kind of this is a perfect way to kind of bridge into the power segment because I mean you would have to agree if you can create your own community. And then you can create your own currency or your own form of exchange, right? Because all currency is is a way of exchanging goods and services, whether the services is a is an event and in exchange you're providing the merch or you're providing uh, tickets or whatever you're providing, that exchange is key. And so what I find interesting is, you know, in terms of regulations and things of that nature, because you guys would know, you're in it. Are people afraid that, you know, regula regulations or regulatory folks will come in and, and break down the, the, the gaming community? Or, or how do you guys protect yourself and how do you maintain your power? Andrew, I like to, you know, you're the community guy. You, the, I think, as far as regulatory goes, I think the um, the only major concern for a lot of uh, gaming related activities like that would probably be uh, intellectual property rights, um, assets being seized over that or getting your channel demonetized or sponsors pulled out because of any kind of controversy. Um, NFTs, like Marcus was saying, would kind of shield you a little bit from that. Uh, and I don't think people should discount something like that because we've all heard the story of the uh, the first purchase with Bitcoin was somebody bought a pizza for 10,000 of them. And of course they're right. kicking themselves in the butt right now. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. What, do, what are your thoughts, Marcus? Yeah, I think uh, you definitely want to get a good lawyer on it. If you don't have one that, that, that you pay for on a regular basis, at least someone that you have access to, um, you know, the SEC is starting to wise up on it for the longest time. They didn't consider Bitcoin a currency. They thought it was just, uh, you know, just a commodity. Um, and, and now they're, they're starting to see it as a, a means of exchange. And, and now they're putting rules into place and people who are breaking those rules are getting fines and in some cases going to jail. So you just have to, to understand the space, but there's, there's still opportunity to innovate there. As, as long as, again, you, you understand the evolving rules and it's a lot to, to keep abreast of, but if you, you understand the rules, you stay within the guardrails, it's a blank canvas. Gotcha, gotcha. So, what do you see as as next? Like, and what what's your business now? I mean, you are going through a transition with Project MQ. We got about four minutes before we go on break, guys. What what's going on within your business, and and how are you evolving through through all of this that's going on in in the gaming industry? 
Great question. We, you know, we're still staying true to supporting indies 100%. I was actually just on a conversation with the indie earlier today, who I think has the next game of the year whenever their game launches. But working kind of the indie route direct to gamers didn't give us the scale that we thought it would. So what we're doing now is partnering with businesses of all sizes to grant them access to the games, kind of the same discovery solution, but for businesses to reach their customers. So instead of B2C, indies to gamers, it's B2B to C. We empower a university. University of Kentucky is our first client. We've got some sports teams, another university I'm speaking with tomorrow, um, to use video games the same way they do social media, again, to build that sense of community. And by leveraging family-friendly games and a wide catalog, instead of just going for the top 20 games that you always hear about, by having a wide, diverse catalog of indie games, there's something for everyone. Someone can play a fishing game. Someone can play a puzzle game and a racing game. So that now you can cast a wider net and engage the entire community. Because everybody can't play Fortnite. Everyone can't be good at Rocket League or, or Madden. But if you have a puzzle game you love to play, you can be the best person at that and then still have a chance to be a part of a community. So that's what we're offering. So so tap into the 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 power move on you doing that. And who else out there is doing what you're doing? My team and I think no one's doing what we're doing because it's it's a counterintuitive strategy, right? 99% of the esports space is focused on the top 20 games and professional or varsity or intramural. We're saying there is some value there, but it's also naturally exclusive, right? Just like with your varsity basketball team. If you've got 15 guys on the team, take USF as an example. Uh, there's 50,000 students in that community. and You've got faculty, staff, and alumni, and, and prospective students. Only those 15 students are the active players of that sport, and everyone else is a spectator. But if you flip the script on that, right, if you make it more about community esports, where it's a social, shared social experience, now everyone can be involved. And what we're also doing is, is partnering again with game credits to bring this cryptocurrency where we can reward their engagement with a branded coin for the brand. So a UK coin or a sports coin, where then they can take that coin and go pay for things they would normally pay with, with cash. So hypothetically, uh, pizza or, or your books or whatever, right? Now you have an incentive to create your own literal monetary ecosystem around a brand where you didn't have before. Wow, no that's, a power, that's a power move. Power move. What, 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 what are your thoughts, Andrew? I like it. Uh, like I said, a, a closed off ecosystem is just seems really secure to be able to ensure growth and just kind of keep it in there. And I like the I like catering to not the top 20 games. I really liked that point on there because you do you just you see Counter Strike is probably one of the biggest esports besides League of Legends. Uh, and then it's it does get tiring to see those same three. And then it's the same handful of players going after the same usually the same sponsors in the same cups. So it's really good to see it branched out a little bit. I think it is a power move. And you, I mean, I, I, I got to say, Marcus, that's pretty huge because, you know, right now, colleges are definitely suffering through this whole pandemic crisis. And, and by the way, I forgot to even ask you guys, how, is everybody, well, we got to go on break. <laughs> so let's pay some bills. And we'll be back in two minutes. Once again, this is Power Moves, where celebrities, athletes, key influential executives share how they make money, how they attract power, and how they earn respect. See you after the break. Trap Talk, Just Talk with Madam CJ. Right here on In Touch Radio every Thursday at 7 p.m. Talk to me, talk to me, baby. Trap Talk, y'all. On In Touch Radio. Hello, Kubo. What have you got planned for today? Come on, this way. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. It's the most powerful magic there is. Head outside to discover incredible animals. Wow. And beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. <laughs> So grab your loved ones and explore a world of possibilities. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. 
My teacher said that we should have a plan in case of an emergency. Do we have one? First thing I'm going to do is grab a flashlight with dead batteries. I'm going to start randomly throwing clothes in the bag. You two will be hiding in the closet and Dad won't be able to find you. And that's when we both start crying. Uncontrollably. Can you pass the cutlets? Winging it is not an emergency plan. Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency. Who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Search ReadyKids at NYC.gov or call 311. Brought to you by the New York City Office of Emergency Management and the Ad Council. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to a good friend of mine. It's the Dash and Dale Day. Put your hands together. Jazz in Miss Connie's house. Ooh, ooh. On In Touch Radio. When it comes to reality radio, everyone is a star. Shining star for you to see what your life can truly be. On your smooth soul and R&B station. On the World Wide Web. In Touch Radio. gaming experts these guys know what it means making this money in this gaming industry so uh before we we went on break i just wanted to uh see you know how you guys doing with you know this whole covid situation is the family okay you know making sure you guys is on point my immediate family is cool uh unfortunately we've had some deaths in the extended family um but i, I think it's hard to this far into where we are now to talk to somebody who hasn't had something like that happen. Uh, so, you know, thoughts and prayers, to everybody listening in who's, who's having to deal with that. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it's a part of life. CJ. Yeah. Thanks, Joel. My, my family's doing well also. And, and, you know, God bless everybody out there who's, who's working in the healthcare industry and stuff like that and helping save lives and, and doing that, that, very, very important work. You know, I'm doing a lot of work in prisons and jails right now. Uh, you named a lot of those fancy places I've been to, but, you know, I end up uh, working in some pretty difficult spots as well. We're bringing entrepreneurship uh, to several different communities here in New Jersey that have been impacted by that uh, prison to pipeline issue. Uh, and and uh, the, those communities are getting hit hard. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's real, it's more important now than ever to get resources where they need to be. So we're going to keep doing that work. Awesome. Awesome. How about you, Andrew? My family has fortunately been okay. There's not been any serious, there's been some near misses with exposure, but uh, just on the same note, thoughts and prayers to anybody that is really having to deal with the, this nasty thing. Awesome. 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 So, Guys, um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, I, I, I want to touch on your curriculum, CJ and Andrew. And then, Marcus, I also want you to talk about the power move that you're making with this Kickstarter campaign that you're doing as well and, and what you're offering. So, CJ and Andrew, could you talk a little bit about what you guys are doing with your curriculum and what makes it uniquely different and how you guys can support of folks that want to be in in the gamers advantage yeah i'll kick that off and then andrew you, you got to tell the story of how we got this whole thing started right but for look joel you know me for years for me it's all about ownership any community on the planet that doesn't understand the principles of ownership is going to be discriminated against blocked mm -hmm. out of opportunity and, and so my whole career is dedicated to bring in the power of ownership to communities around the world. And this gaming community uh, is one where there's so much knowledge, so much information, and it's going to evolve just the way. I mean, let's just take sports. How many athletes were cheated be coming up through the early days of whatever industry, whatever sport you want to talk about, because they didn't understand the principles of business and ownership? And we're seeing a lot of growth in gaming right now. It just makes sense that there that gaming industry and and the and the and the those those uh, online gamers and sports enthusiasts they're going to deal with the same issues. If they don't understand business, if they don't understand ownership, they're going to be at a disadvantage, and they won't be able to make that power move that you're 
talking about unless they do it. Look, it's about the ownership. And I'm not saying in a bad way. We Look, we've seen communities, you and I have worked in communities where people have benefited over generations because they've been able to create sustainable family wealth over time. And that's, that's a, right. that doesn't get talked about a lot in this industry, but that's a big part of what we do, right? So many folks, it's like an artist, right? So many folks do it because they love it and it's fun. And they say, oh, I don't really care about the money. That's okay. But the money can help you. It can help your family. And it can help your community. And those are important things to remember. But Andrew, you had a real specific issue that was one of the sparks for this whole course that we've started. Why don't you share that? Yeah. So the, uh, I remember that the main spark for this whole idea was, uh, I was helping one of my friends grow his Twitch community and he kind of blew up a little bit overnight and then suddenly he had revenue coming in and he had no no idea of how to legally protect it he ran into some issues with payment accounts and then his particular state was stringent on how he claimed that and llc everything like that just trying to get the specifics of business down so that was the initial spark but then after getting into it because I had known CJ after getting a little bit more into it, we kind of realized that there was more to this the further into it we got. Then that, that now that's 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 pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. What about uh, what about you, Marcus? Could you touch on you know your campaign and and, and kind of what's going on and, and and why are you doing this? Great question. Yeah, what we're building is a digital. Um, really kind of a career development and an encyclopedia resource for gamers who want to get into the space professionally, for their parents who want to support their kids' passion or really kind of make sense of their kids' passion, and then ultimately for K-12 through and higher ed organizations who are trying to stay relevant for education in the 21st century. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's so many things happening there. It's one that that education model is clearly outdated and COVID really just kind of became the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, right? But, but there, the bigger opportunity there is the gaming industry, again, $174 billion industry. And if you look at the consumer side, and I'm just speaking for the black community here, you know, 83% of African-American teens play video games and they over-index across all other demographics for that age group. And then you think about esports mm. fans, 21% of Esports super fans are black. So clearly we're present there on the consumer side. If you look on the producer side, only 2% of all gaming industry professionals are black. And I see that as an issue when 14% of you know the US community, the population is black. There's a huge disparity there. So one part of it is everyone, if you want to get into gaming and make that your passion, how do you figure out opportunities that aren't just playing competitively for money and live streaming? And then for the black community, um, as you mentioned earlier, CJ, you know, missing out on, on opportunities to generate wealth. There are billions upon billions of dollars being made in this industry, 15 extra billion dollars just this year, right? And then the vast majority of it is, is missing the black community that, you know, we're, we're having conversations this year heightened conversations about diversity, inclusion, and, and equity. Uh, so how do we make all that happen? That's what this book is for. It's digital, so it can be accessible. We're selling it for $20. There's a magazine version for 40 And with both purchases, um, our backers will unlock the course that we're producing in the spring that teaches you the kind of the nuts and bolts, the how-to of each of the functional roles. And we're going to offer a micro-certification so you can then take that credential and go start an internship or actually start a job in the industry. So we're opening doors. Awesome, awesome. You know, that, and that's that, that, and that's a power move right there. I have a general question for th the three of you as a challenge. Right, like I said, they're guesstimating over 1 million PS5s are sold and then there's the Xbox that just came out as well. They think they sold about a million of those. How does one turn that into a business enterprise, right? So instead of buying the, the, the console as something that's like, hey, this is a gift under the Christmas tree, you say, you know what? This is a perfect way to potentially write it off. Or is that possible? 
Well, the hustler way to do that is to not just get one, one console, is to get like 20 of them, right? And then once they're all sold out, you can take your $500 PlayStation and sell it for $750 or $1,000, right? Supply meets demand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's if you Taking can get notes. it, right? Taking notes. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd probably say, as far as content creation goes, and I'm, I might be biased, but I, I'd say PC would probably be the the best initial investment if you're interested in that because not only are you getting the gaming out of it but you're also getting where you can do all the work and then that helps you stream as well i know xbox and ps5 probably have streaming built in but you really don't have camera options or the effects obs streaming softwares and then you can get a lot of work and play done i would say mm, okay okay what are, what are your thoughts, CJ? You the OG over here. <laughs> yeah, this gray hair is real. Um, <laughs> you're you're talking PS five scores. You know, I'm going back to the old Pong. You know, I remember walking into my aunt's house and there was a little white box with two dials on the side of it. And we were playing Pong on the TV. So you know, that's how old I am. But listen, we don't want to hear all that. First thing I would say, Joel, is look, you gotta you gotta get legal, right? If you're gonna start talking about tax write-offs and benefits and all those kind of things, you you know, Marcus mentioned earlier, you gotta you gotta get your attorney involved or fill out that paperwork yourself. You can do it. We teach it in the course. It's not that expensive. The other important person to have is a is a bookkeeper or an accountant. Make sure you're keeping all those receipts, right? Because that's how you get in trouble. Um, and then uh, you want to make sure you file all the proper paperwork and do all those things. But that's a deep dive. And that, again, that's in the course. I think what you're talking about is there's multiple opportunities here, particularly when you start to talk about transferable skills. Remember uh, when we were talking in, in the course, we interviewed the folks from Game, Game Drive, Chris and his team, and they talked about how, you know, you're just you, you might in the game, you might be saving your, your power ups for the next, you know, big surge or whatever. You know, you have to make those kind of decisions. Do I use these now or I do, do I use those later? Those are kind of decisions that gamers are making on an instant in game decisions. And yet entrepreneurs are making the same decisions in their business. So I would broaden it from what you're talking about. And that somebody who's able to make those kind of decisions in game is halfway there to making those kind of decisions in their business. And what we try to let folks know is that if you can if you can be successful in in game, you can also be successful in market. It's those same skills, we'll just coach you up on the business side. So really, any business is possible. We've all been blessed with gifts and talents. We try to teach people to leverage those in the marketplace in a positive way, help themselves, help their community through a business. You know, I, I and I wanted I have another question for you guys as well, um, because you 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 touched upon it yourself, CJ, when you talked about community and and you know our relationships and seeing how the wealthy have built wealth through generations, right? Would you say that that's a great opportunity, whether it's purchasing a PC, as Andrew was mentioning, or whether it's purchasing a PS5, where a mother whether it's a single mother, whether it's a father, buying it for their children and saying, okay, you know what, we're gonna go into business with each other. Do you guys see that there's an opportunity for that? And with that type of, of, of engagement, what benefits do you see that can come out of it? I can share a quick example, a real example uh, in my family, my cousins um, sent me a text message. They wanted to talk to me because they know that I work with video games and, and um, their son is a five-year-old. He said, he went up to him and said, mom and dad, I want to start my own YouTube channel. I don't know how you can make that decision as a five-year-old because <laughs> my three-year-old just wants to eat marshmallows. But <laughs> at a five, at five years old, he knew he wanted to do that. So my cousin, um, and, and her husband were in the car. We had a conference call and I said, you know, there's, there's money to be made here, right? We look at Ninja. Ninja started somewhere, right? He didn't mm -hmm. become Ninja overnight. And it's great that, that your son wants to be part of a, a business. It's content creation. So I said, why don't you take that and make it a family business? Because my cousin is a lawyer. So you can provide the legal support. Um, you know, your daughter can help with the creative and the logo and the design, like make it a family business. And 
I've talked to a couple people who have their kids doing the same thing, teaching kids how to, to beat games or, or again, content creation or even reviewing the new PS5, right? Like right when it came out, nobody knew what it looked like, what kind of features that it had. You could do that and make uh, content around that and, and turn content creation into a business. There's also game development, right? When these consoles launched, those games have been, probably been developed the last two to three years prior to the launch. So if you can get in early, you're the first games on the market. Now you've got, like you said, a million people who own a PS5. There's only a handful of games at launch. I mean, it's 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 a, a gold rush, basically. Mm. Okay. Andrew, what are your thoughts? Well, I'd say that it's, it's a wealth of opportunities because um, I started getting hand-me-down PCs when I was probably like eight or nine and then just tinkering around inside of them and just kind of upgrading them as i could uh, that just kind of ignited the passion for me and then of course gaming i'd say if i hadn't gotten into it as young as i did i would probably not have half of the opportunities that i did today so my stepdaughter and then my future kids i'm absolutely going to encourage that awesome 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 cj yeah i i love what the fellas just shared right and and uh uh so here's a silly example of how it can help. And, you know, we've written, uh, Jill Callahan and I have written nine books on entrepreneurship. Fact is, I don't own, neither one of us own one of those books. In fact, Andrew owns more of those books than I do, right? Because, <laughs> because Jill and I both signed over the books in trust to our children. So that if either one of us, God forbid anything terrible happens, uh, passes away, the revenues from those books now go directly to our children. Mm -hmm. so, Power move right there. Well, so that's the kind of knowledge that if you understand business and you and you know those inside tips, uh, Marcus just gave you one. Here's another one. You know, I don't own my own book. My children do. And I think that's the power of generational wealth and the power of business knowledge. Secession. Whatever business you create in, in this gaming community, you can set up those type of systems to benefit your family. Secession planning. I love it. I love it. So we're going to tap, we're going to tap into the last round, which is really the respect segment, right? Could you share a time where you guys ever felt that, you know, what you were bringing to the table, people were laughing at you because perfect example is, We've all watched Ride Along with Kevin Hart. Mr. Black Hammer. <laughs> he had a dime piece of a girlfriend, fiance, and the brother-in-law was like, I can't believe you marrying this security guard, <laughs> Nick Kumpoop, and I got to bring him on this Ride Along to see what he's made for, what he's made of, right? So can you share with us a time where, you know, you? People looked at you kind of weird and you you had to command respect. I mean, and I think Marcus can probably relate. Whenever whenever you mention to most people that you're involved in gaming at all, you get kind of the, the bated breath and a little bit of the eye roll. I think that attitude's probably a little bit less true than now, but there's been several times where I've mentioned it and then you get that response and then you do just kind of have to walk it back and explain further what the opportunities are there and usually people are a little bit more interested after that i have a simple rule of thumb um you know i, I tactfully and respectfully request to see the table and if i'm denied that seat of the table i just go build my own damn table yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right so so share with us a time where you had to do that show me how you build your table bro <laughs> all right, all right. So, so we, we've been working with uh, the Tampa Association of Gaming, TAG, you know, the last several years to build up both the gaming industry and STEAM youth programs here in the last, uh, you know, in the Tampa Bay region. And we've gotten practically zero support from the city of Tampa as a community, right? All of mm. us want that to happen for Tampa with Tampa, but Tampa doesn't want that to happen with us or for us. So we've mm. had in the last 12 months some excellent conversations with the city of St. Pete. You know, and again, it's it's no shade to either one of them, but we, we had the exact same conversation. It says, this is what esports can bring to you. 
We've shown what it's done, shown you what it's done to Georgia, right? In 2018, they generated $830 million of direct economic impact from companies created, jobs created, and technical, technical degrees confirmed. Uh, that didn't seem to resonate with the city of Tampa and the Tampa community. Ooh, shots fired. Where's my gunshots? Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> so that's that's why the, our, our Super Bowl esports event is going to be hosted at the St. Pete um, campus, St. Pete, uh, sorry, St. Pete College in the Seminole campus, because the St. Pete community was willing to embrace that opportunity for economic development, academic development, and community development. Mm. What about you, CJ? Oh, man, you get to be my age. You got a lot of those, right? Um, but look, the good news is, and I say this to all the young folks, the good news is no, this is another business lesson. Know your value, right? Know your self-worth in the marketplace and don't compromise on it. Don't compromise on it. It's not sale day here at the CJ shop anymore, okay? We're not doing it. So, uh, I, but I'll share my, late, my, my my most recent one was about four years ago and I was involved with another startup. We were trying to raise 1.8 million and we had a meeting down on Park Avenue with some one of the banks that you all know, I won't mention their names. And we were talking to their private wealth management folks. And those are tough conversations. Marcus, I know you know this, you've had these kind of conversations and no matter how well you know your stuff, it can be tough. Well, on this day, I walked in and guess what? All of a sudden now I'm getting questions and suddenly I realized halfway through the meeting, these guys are discriminating against me because I'm old, right? And there's a term called blue mm. flame. There's a term called blue flame in investing. And I was falling under that category, right? I was too old. They didn't think I was going to hustle enough. They thought I was going to be paying too much attention to my wife and children. <laughs> you know, go ask them about that, right? <laughs> but anyway, so, so there are all these things going on. And and you know what? We stood up from the table when it was all over. I got down on, on Park Avenue and just imagine I looked up at the sky and I said, dear God, please help me. I don't ever, ever want to have to go through that again as long as I live. And I called Jill up. She was, we, we hadn't even written the book yet. She said, why don't we write a book? I said, okay, Jill, let's write a book. And that was nine books ago. That was four years ago. And now we've had, I haven't looked back since. Uh, for, mm. But no, they got, we got the money, but I walked away from the 1.8 million because I didn't want to be under their control. I wanted to do it, do it my way. No. I would ask key. Real quick to that uh, similar story, we ended up going the equity crowdfunding route. Um, you know, you may not know this, you may know this, but um, venture capitalists only invest in one percent of the deals they see, and unfortunately, only about half of half a percent of that one percent go to black-owned businesses. It used to be one percent. For some reason, it's now lower. I'm not sure how that's possible, but we are in America. Um, and, and so, after seven years of trying to go that route of, of chasing VCs and trying to plead my case and in our case for the innovation we're building, our team, the market opportunity, the upside, we just decided to go the equity crowdfunding route and we raised $56,000 in two weeks. You know, after spending seven years trying to raise, only raise five grand in seven years, we did $56,000 in two weeks. Wow. Wow. Like you said, build your own table. That's how you get your respect. You hustle it up and do your thing. So what's the goal? What's your goal in raising the capital? We raised the capital so that we could finish our kind of our MVP, our, our alpha platform to mm -hmm. launch at next year's Super Bowl. So we'll have our launch event um, in February, the weekend of February 5th, when everyone from around the world is tuning in to Tampa Bay for the Super Bowl. Gotcha. All right, guys. So we got one minute. Oh, I think we got two minutes left. I think my producer is telling me. I got to say gaming is, is a lifesaver with everything that's going on in COVID. You know, it's really helping, you know, like you said, the communities. Uh, it's also giving people an alternative life besides us Generation Xers listening to D-Nice, like I've been doing, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. But can you share with us uh, some last words about, you know, how do people get in contact with you? and um and and uh and which you know what are you guys are working on go ahead marcus yeah um you can find me on facebook and linkedin at marcus esports howard 
Um, if you're listening to this broadcast, please support the book. Again, it's about creating economic opportunity for everyone. It's an accessible book. It's a valuable book. It's, it's a career development opportunity. That's, that's my plug for tonight. Uh, thanks again for this opportunity. Great. CJ and Andrew. Yeah, you can check both of us out at OFBV.network. And we're getting ready to launch the Gamers Advantage. It's a course on how gamers can start their own business and be successful in the marketplace. Excellent. And and they can get a, they can get a coupon code for this. Just put at the end of it, Power Moves, and CJ and, and Andrew will, will, will hook you guys up. Any okay. any any hookups from my peoples on the on the skills development markets? Can can we get a power moves discount from my listeners? What the deal, baby? If they're back in the campaign again, that course that we're going to offer in the spring is a thousand dollar course. So that the hookups right there. Spend twenty bucks and get a free a thousand dollar free course. All right, all right, all right. Put in that code power moves in there, and they get that. They get a little something. Can they get an autograph? Can they get something? <laughs> they can get an autograph. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. That's what I'm talking about. So once again, this is Power Moves, guys. Thank you very much for for sharing your knowledge, your input. You know, I'm very excited about this whole gaming industry because, like I said, you know, there's a lot of money to be made. It reminds me of what what hip hop is in regards to community and culture. So you guys are the are the next leaders, and I look forward to seeing you be multi billionaires within the next ten years. All right. Once again, this is Power Moves. We out. DJ Anna, take us away, baby, baby.